anyway okay so um let's um we're looking at uh, chapter 4 right restoring the soul receiving healing and deliverance um let me share the notes okay okay so healing and deliverance uh, is it one and the same thing healing deliverance what is the difference sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> deliverance is more of emotion now no why are we using two words then <laughs> Mm. You can use the mic so others can also. Yeah. <laughs> so we have it on record what you're saying. Say, say, <laughs> use the mic. <laughs> it's okay. Um, healing is. Uh... Uh, I, my uh, thought is like healing is uh, for something that we need to come out, like need to come out through, but deliverance is like. From especially of uh, torments or uh, healing is from the event what happened, mm. but deliverance is from the event, like from the event. Huh? Yeah, like the mm. things like what such as. Mm. Okay. Like mostly we use our uh, deliverance is from deliverance and from our thoughts that torments us or like. Addictions mm. and all, but healing is for heart thing. Heart, okay, so he, like, uh, yeah, healing can be physical and uh, emotional as well, right? So it's uh, it's something that is damaged that is repaired, which is brought back to its original original uh, form, right? Uh, it could be emotions that are damaged. It could be um, uh, you know our thought process, our imagination that is you know damaged. It could be a physical. You know anything in our body, organs missing, not functioning, right? So that's being brought back to its original thing is healing. But when we say deliverance, we are exclusively we talking about something that that is because of the presence of the force of powers of darkness, which is caused by, which is energized by the powers of darkness. So we, we are delivering. You know we are actually forcefully. Uh, removing, yeah, expelling uh, the powers of darkness using our authority so that there can be deliverance. Now, the powers of darkness can cause either physical or emotional thing, right? We read about the spirit of infirmity causing that, you know, woman to be bent over. Uh, and then we, we read about the deaf and mute spirit, which caused that deafness and muteness, you know, uh, uh, the inability to speak in a person. So Jesus cast that spirits, those spirits out, and the person was delivered, right? And so also the people who had demonized, like the gathering demoniac, he was found clothed in his right mind when the the legion or you know the, all these evil, many evil spirits were cast out. So so deliverance is deliverance meaning freedom, freedom from what? Freedom from the powers of darkness, which try to oppress, um, energize, empower certain conditions, um, either physical, emotional, so on, right? So here we are talking, of course, about the emotional part. That is what inner wholeness is about. So we're talking about restoration of our emotions, our thoughts, our imagination. So restoring the soul, right? So it happens uh, both ways through healing and deliverance. So we, we looked at some broad categories um, like through sanctification and consecration that was the first one sanctification being being separate you know separating oneself from what a, whatever could be a let's say an open door right uh, for anything to attack an open door for uh, you know um, like for the powers of darkness to oppress and so on so sanctification so you're separating yourself distancing yourself cutting away that inroad or that source right which is energizing certain conditions and um, so when we consecrate then naturally we cut off that um, that power uh, cut off whatever the uh, enemy is doing in our lives right so healing and deliverance comes about that it comes because of that 
right? Uh, and we looked at uh, healing and deliverance happening through God's presence and anointing. The very presence of God, the very anointing, uh, which is the presence and the power of God, causes deliverance to happen, right? And that is why, um, you know, there's so much of emphasis on and on worship and uh, and uh, inviting the presence of God and so on. So in the presence of God, there is there is fullness of joy. Right? In the presence of God, there is liberty, so which is all the opposite of uh, the, the enemy's imprisonment and you know oppression, which is opposite of that, right? Liberty, which is opposite of oppression, right? Deliverance, which is again opposite of uh, possession or imprisonment. So, in the presence of God, right? There is uh, in the presence of God, there is the power of God and the anointing. The Bible talks about the anointing breaking the yoke so when you talk about anointing what does the anoint what does anointing mean presence and the power of god right so what is the glory of god <laughs> sorry tangible yeah so glory of god is um, uh we can say it is tangible. It is the uh, it is who God is and what He does. Right? It's, it's something focusing on the doing of God. You know who He is. It it points to the heart of God, the nature of God, the character of God. But it's what He does. It's revealed. It's something that is tangible. You know, the glory of God, the anointing of God. Again, you know, it is the presence and the power of God. Right. So empowering a person to do certain things. Right. Empowering a person to, you know, the, he says, the Spirit of God has appointed me. The Lord says, He has anointed me to, and He lists down two things, right? So it's empowerment, okay, right? So through the presence and the empowerment, there is healing and deliverance. And the thirdly, uh, healing and deliverance through active resistance. Okay, James chapter 4, verse 7 Submit to God, resist the devil. Okay, in submission, we receive the authority. In order to resist, you know? so so submission comes first, and resisting comes second. So, in submission we receive authority. In submission we place ourselves as people who can actually positionally resist the enemy. Right. So it's therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. First Peter one and verse thirteen again says that uh, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Christ Jesus, right? Jesus Christ. So going up the loins of your mind, talking about the thoughts, thinking about, you know, is, is sharing about how it needs to be uh, disciplined, it needs to be girded up, it needs to be put together, and therefore we can resist. Okay, We cannot resist if we are passive. We cannot resist if our, you know, our mind is not focused, if we are preoccupied. We cannot resist. Right. So, First uh, Peter one thirteen talks about that. Okay. So, um, so we looked at all this, right? Um, so, never forget the big picture. Never forget, you know, why we can actually go into all this. It is because God wants us well, right? God desires this for us, and therefore we can do this confidently, right? and and not in not be in two minds. Like we can do this confidently because God wants. And there are several scriptures we looked at to, to see, you know, how, why, how can I be sure that God wants this for me, and that God wants this for, for humanity, right? For the church, for the people. How can I be sure? Several scriptures, again, you know, 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23 talks about that, that your whole spirit, soul, and body, let it be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord, right? Spirit, soul, body, right? Including everything that a man is made of. So we can say, okay, God wants my soul to thrive, to flourish, to be healed, to be restored, right? Okay. So let's look at, um, you know, this pathway. You know, it's not a formula. Um, it's, you know, God can do things in an instant. We don't have to, you know, but it's a, we don't have to like say, okay, after this step one, step two, step three, only then, you know, there will be uh, healing and deliverance and restoration. But this is a good 
pathway to follow, not only for ourselves, right? Um, I mean, not only for others, but for all for ourselves. You know, we can actually use it as something to check our own lives. Okay. Okay. So let's um, let's look at the first one. First one means first one is to repent. Okay. So what does repent mean? Repentance mean change of mind, turn away. Okay. So. Um, it is. It is. Uh, it's as if you're going in one direction and you make a 180 degree turn, and that's repentance. Right? You're turning away. Okay. Sorry. So, um, you know, remorse accompanies repentance. Right? Remorse meaning you're sorry for what the way you lived, and maybe you're feeling intensely sad. Right? It can accompany repentance, right? But just remorse does not mean there is repentance. Right? Just because there is, I'm feeling sorry and I'm crying does not mean that I've had a change of mind. Very important. <laughs> because repentance is a decision, it's a choice. Like it's a hard decision, right? I might feel sad that I'm in this such a state in life. I might feel sad. That, oh, I've really, you know, I've disappointed God. I might feel sad saying, you know, I've made God, you know, I, I've, I've, despite all that He's done for me, given to me, you know, I've not been grateful. I've not been faithful. I might feel sad, intensely sad, okay, which is a good thing. But that is not repentance. That can, that need not always lead to repentance because repentance is a choice that I make, realizing that I've, you know, I'm not in the right place. I've done something wrong. I've uh, hurt God. I've hurt people, right? So I realize all that and then make a decision to change, a decision, a change of mind. So yeah, so we need to be careful. We need to understand that. You know, even in our own lives, you know, am I repenting or am I just feeling remorseful, feeling sad? Right? Um, like, you know, children, they cry because they've been found out. You know, they found out that, hey, you've done something wrong and you just, you know, said, why did you do that? They're crying. And then they're crying because they've been found out. I've been found out that I've done something wrong and, you know, but does that mean that they're going to change? They're not going to do it again? <laughs> we need to check. Yes, sir. Uh, Pastor, like, we, like, remorse does not mean there is a repentance, right? That does not necessarily mean it that. It yeah. does not necessarily mean there is a repentance. But uh, can there be also a repentance without remorse? Without feeling sad? Yeah. Or feeling guilt for what happened? And can there be a repentance? So is it the other way around, you know, can I repent without remorse or can I repent without, see, the thing is, uh, when we do something wrong, uh, there is, you know, the Holy Spirit is grieved, okay, so, and also our conscience uh, there is a, what, what we, our conscience is affected, for want of a better word, I'm just saying conscience is affected. So we know, we are convicted that something is wrong. Okay, so it can it can start with the place of guilt, right? Oh, I realize, oh, this is, this is wrong. Intentionally, I've hurt someone. So there is, uh, there could be guilt. And, and so you want to change. But it needn't go into a, you know, it, I'm just saying, I'm just, it's my opinion, it need not go into a major case of remorse and, you know, crying and etc. You might feel bad and then quickly say, okay, God, you know, you're feeling convicted. I need to change. I will change. You make up your mind. Yeah. You want to use? Um, so sin again and again. We repent. We we left and we are doing it. So can we call it is it is as a, not a true repentance? That depends on you know our you know that depends on me. I'll know. Sometimes I can. Is that yeah. the thing? It's it's uh, 
uh, it's, it's maybe emotional someone will cry to right. repentance right. people will will be doing many times this repentance and all but when this true repentance will come <laughs> yeah so the thing is you know okay maybe let's say somebody repented truly okay but yeah but they did not they were not careful to uh, to avoid those mistakes or they, they were not careful or they were not um what should i say they were not informed about you know how to protect themselves from uh, from the this thing of the triggers of the of the uh, you know of about the triggers that can cause the same thing or you know they were not careful enough to strengthen themselves one one is awareness the second one is to strengthen themselves maybe they were not they were totally ignorant of the resources they were available for them in christ okay so okay, this is something for you you know there's the name of god the name of jesus the uh, you know all these things are their sword of the spirit which we and the renewing of the mind all this is required in order to walk in victory you know if you're led by the spirit of god and you know and also some of these triggers that you avoid initially because you're not strong enough on the inside so maybe they were not educated in this informed about this therefore they fell again so i i won't say they did not repent truly they must they may have truly repented but because of this they fell again and again and again till they came to a place of saying hey uh, you know somebody helped them or they realized uh, from the word they saw this and then they said yes and then they they were able to overcome and walk victoriously yeah uh, i forget the reference but it says a righteous man falls seven times yeah so he's seven times he's fallen yeah proverbs actually that is peter's question yeah so yeah 70 times 7 so and uh, and then theologians also say that it is yeah huh? on per day <laughs> so 490 times per day uh, 70 times 7 is 490 so divided by 24 you know you see per hour how many you can how many times and <laughs> see what the what the thing is this um so the bible also talks about a you know a one who is born again uh, does not sin and that cannot continue in sin because the spirit of god you know one john talks about that that the spirit of god is convicting and, and making life miserable actually you you're miserable right as a believer if you have a lifestyle of sin you're you're not happy you're miserable you know you just need to you know you come to a place of just hardening yourself so much and removing yourself from church and every believer so that you can be free of all that and i don't want to be convicted i just want to move away it's a miserable life it's not a happy joyful life and then you realize once there is reconciliation with god fellowship is restored then you realize oh this is what i always wanted <laughs> but unfortunately you know you just stepped away for a season yeah <laughs> A believer can sin. Yeah, they can't continue to live to, you know. Yeah, because uh, in the sense, the Spirit of God is pursuing them. God is pursuing them. God is sending people, uh, pursuing them, just getting them. So they cannot, they cannot. Calling. Repenting and then being restored and again. In a way, yeah, I mean, if you want, technically, if you see, it's not, but then, yeah, they are actually falling back to the same pattern of uh, sinning. Yeah, but then they are having in between seasons of, you know, victory, walking in victory, but then going back. Yeah. You can't really, yeah, you can't really say. And also, you see, you can just look at our lives. You can't really observe from others. And then uh, that's the thing, yeah. Anyway, so coming back to repentance. Okay, so um, 
so it's to, to turn away from uh, from something completely and turn back to god so isaiah 55 talks about you know um let's read that scripture um yeah so um Isaiah 55 and verse 6, right? So it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God and he will abundantly pardon. Okay, so that's the heart of God. And also that, you know, this is something that God desires for us um, to call upon him. And God says, you know, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous his thoughts. So the way and the thoughts both are uh, there, mentioned there. And to, in order to turn to God, for he will abundantly pardon. That's his will, that's his heart, right? Okay, so um, so what are some things that I can repent about? Okay, so um, wrong thoughts, wrong thought patterns, and uh, wrong things that you believe about yourself about god about others okay so it could be wrong thoughts um, and you know and we know it right wrong thought patterns also what is the wrong thought pattern sorry sorry pattern ah, so when, what is a pattern right you know, no, no, that's a, yeah, that's a wrong thought. But then when you say a pattern of thought, yeah, so it's a, it's a series of thoughts. Like when you say a, something is a pattern, it's a, certain things that are put together, woven together. So it's a thought pattern that I have. Okay, something happens, and this is my thought pattern. I, I feel bad about myself. I feel bad about God. I feel bad about, you know, I feel, uh, I don't feel right about the other you know, it's a thought pattern, it's a process, right, that follows. So wrong thoughts, wrong thought patterns, and wrong beliefs about ourselves, about God, about others. Okay. So, a yeah, pattern is actually, a, what do you call as a pattern? Pattern is a few things that you, images that you put together that that makes a whole. Right, a whole picture. That's a pattern, right? So when you say pattern, it's a it's a process. These are steps uh, of, or you know, st or let's say uh, ways in which I think, and it's a series of things. You know, it, it leads to another thought. It leads to another, and this is how I think normally. It's a thought pattern that I have. So whenever somebody is fearful, they can get that fear can trigger them into a pattern of thought. Somebody is feeling uh, or somebody you know fearful is one trigger maybe something uh if they are hurt then they might have a thought pattern you know their pattern of self pity pattern of maybe even hardening their heart against the people bitterness and against god eventually saying that you know you only made you know you made me like this or you know things like that so it's a pattern it's not just one thought but it's a series of thoughts right um so yeah so so i just want to um you know that, that's that's one thing okay or what else can we repent of you know repent of wrong words that we can speak over ourselves ourselves right um you know uh, i used to play tennis uh, when I was in school, just before college. So in tennis, you know, we, we guys used to talk to ourselves. Right? Come on, da, what, what did you play? You know, we just play one wrong shot and we're like, Cha, what did you do, man? So we're not talking to the, you know, even to the partner or I'm, you know, I'm just talking to myself. You know, that was, that was really silly. That was really bad. And we're talking to ourselves, right? So similarly, we speak words over ourselves. I say that was, that was bad. That was terrible. I hate it. Um, and then we speak over our own lives. So what are those words that we have spoken that we are speaking over our lives? You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I don't, uh, I'm not wise. I'm just putting it well, right? You know, which means that we're saying I'm stupid. You know, how many times we are, have we spoken that? Right? If so, it's to repent 
of that those words that we have spoken okay third thing repent of you know continual sin habitual sin you know we've repented we've gone back we've repented and gone back uh, so those are things to repent of again sometimes what happens is this continual sin the very area that we fall over and over again we get so tired that we don't even repent uh, forget it yeah i don't want to repent you know i i, I know i'll go back to it again but i don't want to repent i don't want to even say god i am changing i've you know i've said so many times 100 times why should i do it why should i say it i'll just leave it so we don't repent right um so we need to repent of you know continual sin or habitual sin uh if there is anything if there is anything again you know that we are engaged in so we don't have to you know make up something <laughs> if it is so you know if the spirit of god convicts then repent then uh, if there is any involvement in occult or false religion you know that's that's also one big area you know um in the name of fun we could actually inadvertently get sucked into or be involved in you know the occult or uh, what is occult It talks about directly involvement in witchcraft or powers of darkness or you know things like that black magic and and things like that right so when we were small you know i remember they used to tie some thread okay oh this was from and harmless we were all not believers and we were nominal christians but okay this is from that place so you tie it and then something around the waist okay this we tie it uh I just tie it okay so then one when one one day when i just you know realized that um, i think it was i was reading a book by neil t anderson okay neil anderson uh, that was the first thing i think i read about you know all these things and healing and deliverance and so on so I literally sat down and repented of all that and broke you know the yeah yeah god i actually was doing that and um, and you know we, we had people who were helping in the house so because when we were growing up they used to do this uh, i don't know what you call it we used to call it sambrani in tamil right sambrani yeah it's it's yeah those things <laughs> and yeah exactly exactly you know to prevent the evil eye but that's an invitation for the evil eye <laughs> right so you prevent the evil eye so there's this full smoke and you know, especially you finish your bath and come and then there is all this you know it's nice smelling incense but then you know they put it and then in their hand they have this chill, chili and uh, something okay ah huh? chili lemon whatever i don't know they had this in their hand and then they do that over you clockwise anti clockwise <laughs> you used to do that okay and then one funny thing we had to spit into it <laughs> right so they say do you don't have to really fully spit but you, you know that you know do that spitting action anti clockwise anti clockwise and then where are they going to do it i think they they'll go through it somewhere it's like to remove something so all these things so we just innocently you know and as parents also they didn't realize so they said okay let's, let's do it we did it christian household church going not really believing but we did it right so any such involvements in the occult of false religion or, you know maybe even like you know believing in horoscope and um you know astro um what is it astrology and palm reading and all these things uh, we are actually removing the source of god right and then moving into this so um yeah so um so some things that we can write maybe we can take some time to write down okay we have some some time you can just write down okay what are some wrong thought patterns that i've been having okay so you don't have to share right but you can write down uh or maybe just put it on your phone and on a you know word doc or whatever uh for us to see you know for you to see yourself personally saying you know uh, have i been like harboring wrong thoughts okay so a, a thought that is not right in god's eyes right um thought patterns so uh and also maybe we can we can start with that maybe you know maybe just write two things wrong thoughts okay have been maybe having any wrong thoughts any wrong thought patterns okay uh, how much time do you need 
Yeah, right now we can do um, five minutes. No, this yeah, two minutes. Okay, so we'll take two minutes to do that. I'll just put a timer, and when the timer, oh, sorry, grocery list. Okay, let's just uh, take top two. Okay, um, yeah, we don't have to share. No, we don't have to share. So let me um, it, just for us to help us, you know. Um, so we'll be surprised. Okay, two minutes. Okay, let's go. Um, So we have about 20 seconds. Uh, if you're done with wrong thoughts, you can go into um, you know, wrong words. Yeah, wrong words that you've spoken over yourself. Okay, You can go into that. No, it could be wrong thoughts. Thought, thoughts could be about you. Thought, thoughts could be about God. Okay. Other people. So self, others, God himself. Word is to our body. Yeah. Negative. Huh. It could be. Yeah, but the thing is that um, okay. Oops. Array. Okay. Yeah. So it could it it can be. It could be uh, describing a situation that uh, you know or something that you did, but that's not you. Right. That is that is not this is what you did, but this is the thing. No, many times we we say this is who I am, 
identity right based on what we did task right so the act of what what you did so you maybe you stole something and then you say i am a thief or you said something or did something unwisely then you tell yourself i am a fool you know and and you repeat it to tell i am a fool i am a fool so now your identity has become one with that wrong that you did okay and you say this is who i am this is who i am so that's that's what you did true uh, and but then you call yourself you know you identify yourself with uh, you know which is not right right okay so uh, i think something else uh, with what you can write down will really help us um to zero in okay um okay so you written that down okay so may, just write five things that you hate about yourself <laughs> again you don't have to share um five things that you hate about yourself no if there's nothing leave it don't worry don't just think of what is it that i hate um do 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 yeah all that that we don't like and it might be a perfectly righteous thing you know this is why i hate myself but then yeah what what you hate about yourself let's uh, i think that will really give us uh, you know open our eyes to how, how we see ourselves right okay Okay, that that list I think must have gone pretty fast, right? Okay, Anand, did you write or you're meditating on some things? <laughs> okay, so so the thing is, you know, these things that we wrote. Okay, this is what I hate about myself. Okay, it's it's referring to certain failures, certain things that we did not do, certain commitments that we did not keep up, certain patterns that we see in ourselves, and all those things. You know, habitual sin, maybe consistent sin. uh etc and the words that you've spoken about all that you know now this what we hate about ourselves leads to certain you know if you're not careful it leads to certain things that we believe about ourselves okay we've come to believe 
I will censor certain statements. I will always be da 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 da. I will I will one I will always be whatever. I will always I will end up you know like this. Um and you know I and statements like that, which which are lies, but this is these are things that we believe about ourselves. You know, I will always be like this, I will always be a failure, maybe I will always be, you know, and because we hate it so much. We begin to believe the lie, uh, and it's a lie about ourselves. Okay. Now, you, these are things that you hate about yourself. Just what is? What do you think Jesus says about these things? Because of these things that we hate about ourselves, we believe something about ourselves. But what do you think? Then, if Jesus looks, if the Lord, He is looking. Uh, we know that he's here. Here, he's looking at these lists. Okay, so what do you think he will say to that? Will he say, "You're hundred percent right. I agree with you"? What do you think he will say? Does he have something else to say about this? What, Francis? Okay. That's why I said. That's why I said. Hmm. Yeah. 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 So some of these things, you know, it's been part of our lives for so long, um, and this we forget that hey, being a new creation also extends to this, right? As long as we hate this. About ourselves, it's it's good that we are aware of it, right? But as long as we hate it, we come, we we believe a lie about ourselves that we are making about ourselves, right? And we're saying, okay, this is who I am, or this is what I will be, I will become, okay? And uh, and and the only thing that we need to do is to again repent of it. You know, that's that. Those are some of the things that we looked at, right? We need to repent, and that's the first step to, or the pathway of healing and wholeness, uh, emotionally. You know, for our soul to start thriving and flourishing. This is the first step, right? Where we identify the lies we believe about ourselves and reject and repent. Okay, um, so. Yeah, uh, we have one more minute. Huh? Okay. So any questions? Anything? Okay. So we have a minute. So why don't we just pray through? You know, um, to help us. There is this, you know, already said prayer. You know, it says, "Lord, I confess and repent of wrong thoughts, wrong thought patterns, or wrong things that I've been believing about you, about myself, and about others." You can so you can specifically look at this list and say, Lord, I you know I've been thinking like this about myself. I've been believing this about myself. I've been believing this about you. Okay. So if you actually take time to go through the Word of God, we see that it's a totally different picture, you know, different thing that God says about about Himself, about you, about others. Okay. So we can repent. So what are we saying? Repenting means, Lord, I reject this, and I distance this, distance myself from this, right? And you just, um, just do that one thing. You know, saying, God, I, I reject this, and I choose to turn away from thinking like this, from speaking like this, from believing this, right? Um, so you just, it, it can be a very hard uh, or um, you know, cold decision. A choice, saying I, I, I choose uh, to stop thinking this like this. Okay, yeah. Let's do that for a minute, and then we'll take a break. Yeah. Okay.
Okay. Okay. Um, just pray. Yes, God, we um, just come to that place and we just say personally, just repent, Lord. Um, make a choice, God, not to think um, or accept the lies about ourselves and about you, Lord, and about others, Master. And um, the things that we've been believing about ourselves, Lord, because of of the hate that we have towards us, God. Um, I just pray, Father God, right now that we reject that. We just loosen our grip on that. And we say, no, it, it will not be part of us. It will not be part of us. We just reject it. We, we refuse to take it and accept it as part, of, as part of our lives. We just refuse it. No matter how long it has been, no matter how, how many times, but today, God, we... We make a choice, we make a decision, we refuse. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, we'll take a break and come back.